Hey guys, my name is Bjergsen from Team Solo Mid, and this is my basic champion's guide to Urgot Mid. I think Urgot is a pretty good champion in Solo Q just because he's so strong. Um, Urgot can play very passively in lane and play to scale, but if you have a good matchup or maybe your jungler has a lot of pressure, you can play super aggressive and zone people and even look for kills with Urgot since he does have a surprising amount of damage if you land the E. So, uh, one thing you need to be wary of in Solo Q is using your ult. People aren't always going to follow up properly, and sometimes you might ult into multiple people. So, just be really careful because the ult does require really good communication. But overall, I think Urgot is a very good champion because he doesn't just have to stomp lane or he doesn't just have to play safe in lane, he has multiple ways of playing and multiple ways of winning the game. How I play the early game generally depends what kind of junglers. If you have a weak early game jungler like Sejuani and maybe they have Rek'Sai on Italy, you want to pull back the lane early and just trade from a safe distance using your E and the Q combo obviously. Um, so if you have a stronger jungler, if your jungler is going to be around mid a lot, you can push up early game and you can look to play really aggressive or you can look for more of a placid play style and get tier 8. Urgot's play size is really situational depending on your matchup and the jungle matchup. So uh, with experience, you'll be able to tell what kind of play style you're going to do going into the game. Um, Urgot has multiple ways of playing teamfights since he is such a versatile champion. You can play him as kind of an engage using the ult at first if you have those tankier items, especially later in the game when you're level 16 and your ult has longer range. But generally, you want to play him as a backline champion and you want to just do as much damage to anyone you really can. You want to be Q autoing, Q autoing the front line, and then when you get a good opportunity to throw your E on the back line, you should be looking to get damage on the back line. But it really just depends how the team fight is playing out. But uh, you can choose between damaging the back line and looking for an engage kind of pick with your ulti, or you can just throw your E on the front line and shred them and burst down their front line. The most important tip on Urgot is landing your E because landing the E means winning the trade really hard or ending up losing it. So it's very important you hit it. Um, pretty much you want to be using it when the enemy is going for a skill shot or uh, last hit. Uh, a lot of skill shots have make the champion stationary for about half a second or a second. Think something like LeBlanc's Q or Cassio's Q. So that's where you can look to get that E in and you can look for trades. It, uh, it also works later in the game when the AD carry on the enemy team is going for auto attacks on your tank or one of the mages is going for a spell. A lot of Urgot players think they have to use their ult on like a carry in a team fight and misposition them to your team, but that's not always what you have to do. If you're really strong on Urgot and maybe you went for the last Whisper build, which is something I tend to do a lot, and you're not as tanky, you can easily ult one of the frontline champions and slow them and give you a lot of resistances that can just make you really tanky throughout the fight and you take very little damage. So instead of looking for some ult on the back line when it's not very realistic, just ult one of the tanks and just shred the tank and kill the tank as fast as you can because once you get through the front line you eventually win the team fight. For runes on Urgot I always go armor pen reds and AD quints. <clears throat> the yellows can be either flat armor or HP scaling depending on the matchup and the blues can be either flat MR or CDR scaling depending on the matchup so it really depends if you're against a physical damage or magic damage character. For masteries on Urgot I usually go 21-9-0 with 9 in defense but in some matchups, you can go 9 in the utility since it gives you better sustain with the strength of spirit since you are going to be building a lot of mana. So it depends whether you're going for more of a sustain poke or for more of like a really bruiserish or gut. But in the offense tree, you, just, you want to get cooldown reduction and then pretty much just get as much uh, physical damage as possible. The skill order on Urgot, you should always go Q at level 1 since it's simply just the best spell to have at level 1. It gives you a lot of trade potential and push potential. At level 2, get the E so you can start actually looking for those trades, get the E down and throw multiple Qs on them. At level 3, you can choose between Shield or Q. If you want to get the Shield, it's because uh, either you think you're about to get ganked or maybe you want to set up a gank and you want to have that slow. Otherwise, go Q for more damage. And for maxing, you should always max Q first. Um, it, it kind of differs between players what they prefer maxing second. I prefer shield. Most people prefer shield since the, it's the HP or the shield value scales really well and the slow scales really well. But if they have a lot of tanks and you're just looking to shred their front line, maxing E second can give you a lot of armor penetration. For starting items on Urgot, I always prefer Flask since Urgot has mana problems early on and it helps him get to that tier really easily. So starting Flask and then getting Chain of the Goddess into mana immune as soon as possible. The more mana is your biggest power spike in the game, so the earlier you get tier, the earlier you get mana immune, the faster you can stack it up. After that, I always go Brutalizer, and this is where you really reach your mid game point where you're really strong, and then you can decide whether you can go Hex Drinker if they have a lot of magic damage, you can go Frozen Heart if they have a lot of physical damage, and if you simply just need more damage, you can go Last Whisper. And in the end, you should have a combination of all of those items Last Whisper, Black Cleaver, Frozen Heart, and either Bloodthirst or Mob Mordius. 
Uh, for boots, uh, either go Merc Treads or Ninja Tab Ice. You generally don't really need the CDR boots since with Brutalizer and Frozen Heart, you're already reaching uh, 35%. Thanks for watching this guide to Ergon in the mid lane. Make sure to check out my other videos here on lawcast.com and you can follow me on Twitter at Bjergsen. Echo is a very squishy champion, even if you build him somewhat tanky with Abyssal or Zhonyas or Roa, uh, you're still going to die fairly easy, especially later in the game. So you want to be playing poison like your Miasma with a W on the back line and use one to two Twin Fangs on all the creeps. It, you're going to stay around the same mana, 